Welcome to another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And here we are, episode 125. 125. What is our topic? This is, how did it all begin? Good. I love this kind of stuff. Yeah, I think this is going to be a lot of, like, wormhole, crazy yeah. following, you know. Definitely so. philosophy and oh, yeah. chatter and... Uh, yes. Opinions. Yes. <laughs> yes. A lot of opinions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, before we hop into that, got anything you want to talk about from last week? I do. Let's see here. Let me bring it up for you. We actually received an email from, this is from Rebecca. She says, hi, Samantha and Danny. I love this week's podcast episode on the pineal gland. I also get weird headaches in the middle of my head like you, Samantha. I had one this past week, a couple of days after listening to that episode. I meditated and did the steps that you said to decalcify, and you know what? It worked. How cool. I love learning new ways to improve my spirituality. This was a great tip, thanks to you both. Samantha, you mentioned your mammogram, but never shared the results. Is everything okay? I'm praying for you and your family and sending healing light to you. Love and light, Rebecca. So thank you for the email, Rebecca. Yeah, that was nice. Very glad that you liked that episode. I did too. And the the um, the headaches in my third eye, I always know that that means I need to meditate when I feel like my third eye, like, I don't know how to explain it. It just feels like clogged. Mm -hmm. Like when your ears get clogged or your nose gets clogged or or whatever, it just feels like it's clogged and it needs to be open. So, um, so yeah, that's interesting to know other people feel that way too. And then she had mentioned the mammogram, and I'm sorry, I totally forgot. I thought that I did. I, I haven't listened back to the episode, but I thought that I said that everything was okay and it was just a cyst. Oh, but, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was probably one of the scarier moments of my life, going through that. So, yeah, um, yeah definitely, you know, I wasn't really prepared to talk about it last week. I didn't know we were going to bring it up, but I just wanted to put it out there and answer this to her because I feel like, <clears throat> the other women that are listening, if you're ever faced with something like that where you come back with a bad mammogram, don't freak out right away because it happens. It really does. Like, I spent a whole week, like, crying. <laughs> yeah. Like, like it was like grief. Like, one day or one minute I'd be crying and the next right. I'd be fine and then I'd be crying and I'd be fine. And I was like, why am I doing this to myself? Like, I'm a psychic. And this is a good tip, too, for people to see that even psychics – they they worry and yeah. they don't always know. Like I knew mm -hmm. I was going to be okay, and I told you that. I'm like, this isn't how the story goes. It doesn't end with me getting breast cancer at 44. It just doesn't. Like I know that, mm -hmm. but I'm still human, and so I still had sure. to hear those test results to know. Yeah. So we. My point is, is that we all worry like this, no matter what you know or you don't know or you feel or you don't mm -hmm. feel. So. It's totally normal because I know other psychics and they do the same thing and they worry themselves silly and they're like, I'm, it's so dumb because I'm a psychic. What am I doing? Yeah. But as much as we human. hate fear, it almost makes that feeling a lot of being alive even greater. It really you know? does. It's, it, it's, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. And that's why I know that, you know, that's just another emotion that's built into us that we're supposed to learn from. Absolutely. I learned a lot from that experience and I think that as my spirituality has grown, I've learned that, that from everything that happens to me, there's a reason why it's happening. Mm. And there's things that I'm supposed to learn from it. And this was one of those. I didn't sit there and go, oh, woe is me. Mm. You know, I cried, yeah. But I thought, okay, if this is how this goes, whatever happens is the way it's supposed to go for me anyways, mm. and I can't fight that. So I'm mm. not going to sit here and like, right. you know, I think I was more worried about that initial you know, test results or whatever, what's going to originally come back. But inside, I knew that whatever was meant for me was what was going to happen. And I can't fight that. And that definitely kept me more calm than I think I would have been if I wouldn't have had my spirituality or, right. you know, like 10, 20 years ago, I probably would have not come out of my room the whole week, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, but thank you for that, Rebecca. I appreciate Thanks, Rebecca. the message and sorry, not pointing that out, but I thought I did. 
Um, so, and then we have two messages, or I'm not, not messages, we have questions that we mm-hmm. do every week. So let's answer those questions. Um, the first one is from Chris. She said, how do I open my psychic abilities more? I know they're there, but not to the best of their potential. Well, I I think that time is really like the number one thing that comes with developing psychic abilities because I'm still developing my abilities. I don't know if I'll ever stop developing them. Like there's some things like getting names that I'm not really good at that I would love to be better at, you know. Um, I think that learning to trust yourself is probably the number one teacher of psychic abilities. You have to trust yourself. That is really the only way that you're going to learn is just to say, okay, I I know I saw this. I saw mm. a vision of this. I know that this is the way it's going to be. And then when it does, you trusted yourself and you know that because you knew it was going to happen. Do you know mm. what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm. So really trust is a big thing. Right. Practice is probably top too. You need to practice. If you don't use these abilities, then I'm not going to say they go away, but just like any other muscle, you know, so you need to find people to practice on, whether that's Facebook groups or live people or whatever you you prefer to do. Everybody's different. But practicing is really, really important. And you can't, you know, like at first I was practicing on you and your your family members that I had mm-hmm. never met. But that gets old. You know, you got to right. step outside of the circle and outside of, <clears throat> of even people, you know, work with animals right. or um, but just practice, practice and don't be afraid to be wrong because that's how you learn. That's how yeah. you learn to interpret things, you know, as if, well, right. OK, I think thought that I saw this, but, but what if I didn't? Okay. Well then you know that that feeling the next time that you have it is, is just a feeling, not a psychic vision, you right. know, but, um, what have what, you got any advice on well, that? Well, I mean, I'm not a psychic, so, and I don't really practice trying to do it per se. I don't think, yeah. I think things just come to me at times and I don't really know if they're even for me or what it's about. Right. Um, I think early on when that was happening for you like i remember seeing some um and this was related to chelsea but seeing some like homeless woman yeah like a flash of that in my in my mind uh-huh. and and so that was like who's that for right why why am i getting that i don't get it a lot you know i really don't but intuitively yeah feelings and things and uh, for myself i think it's when it comes to myself it's harder it, yeah it absolutely but is yeah other than that yeah, that's why I say practicing on other people. Right. And and I think it's also good to limit the amount that you practice on yourself, like drawing cards for yourself and doing that because we have a tendency to misinterpret. Right. Or like, here's, here's another good way to practice. If you do want to use cards, I did this for a long time and I still sometimes do it where I wake up in the morning and I draw cards for myself and I take a picture of them because in the morning they don't necessarily make a lot of sense, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day they do. Mm-hmm. And then you can look back and look at those cards and go, oh, okay, well, so this card was telling me that, you know, I was going to, um, something nostalgic was going to come about my day or whatever. And this happened. So you're putting it together. That's yeah. another great way to learn. But yeah, be careful with how much you practice on yourself because that can lead you down a rabbit hole like when you were starting for you know i only have so many family members and loved ones that have passed so you kind of went through that yeah not you know like lickety split but you know pretty quickly quickly. so for you you have knowing that you had those abilities you had to move on Mm -hmm. to other people for this to grow for that muscle to grow and, and kind of be able to continue on and advance with it um and you also had me right then and there to say yay or nay. Yes. As where part of this learning, like you said, is trusting yourself where you're going to deliver a message, maybe somebody that's across the country or a different time zone. Right. And you're not going to hear back from them for like 24 hours yes. or, or 48 <laughs> yeah, hours. Totally. So you're like, ah, I got to give this message? Like yeah. the horse wears blue socks? What? <laughs> But you have to give it. Yeah, you do. And as strange as the message might be, you're sharing those. And I would say for the most part, 95% of what you're saying is dead on. Right. 
there might be some variations in that other 5% that make it seem like right. it's not on. It's just a variation in your interpretation. Right. Or sometimes people forget things and then they come back later and they're like, okay, this makes sense now. Yeah, because some know. of those things haven't happened yet. That too, yeah. Because absolutely. you've shared with people about mm. you're going to meet such and such. Or right. Or this job is going to come along in your favor. Yeah. And so these are things that haven't occurred yet. Right. Also, here's a good one. Don't get discouraged if you have a prediction and then it doesn't happen because you still have time. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example because Gypsy Brown just added a keyboard player. Mm -hmm. And a few years back, the keyboard player's wife has passed. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking to her and she told me that he was going to come into Gypsy Brown. And so you were trying and trying and trying. Mm -hmm. And then he said to you, I'm sorry, I can't do this right now. He was having a really hard time in his life with yeah. his, you know, his wife and everything. Um, and so he, he left for a while and then all of a sudden he's back and now mm. he's in the band. So yeah. I thought I was wrong. So that was one of the things that I was like, well, how did I interpret that wrong? How did I hear her wrong? Because spirits usually like, that's one of the areas that it's like, it would make no sense for her to tell <laughs> yeah. me that he's coming in when he's not. So don't like get discouraged if something like that doesn't happen because it's still made down the road. They don't, they don't put a time stamp on predictions no, at all. No, You know, not at all. So yeah, time is very hard to predict in itself. So so I, I could go on and on, but I hope that that gave you some good pointers and, and yeah. pointers for everybody else. Thank you for the question, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate it. And then Bob has a question. Uh, I think this is about a uh, dream. He said, not sure you can answer this, but I will have a nightmare sometimes that I'm back being a mailman. I was a mailman for 27 years. I retired 11 years ago. I always wake up <laughs> pissed off because in the dream, I'm arguing with a supervisor. You know why I thought this was such a good question? Because I think we all have dreams like this. Mm -hmm. I had for the longest time until probably 10, 15 years ago, dreams of going back to high school that I was actually in the dream. I was the age that I was dressed in my my schoolgirl uniform at Lorena, you know, <laughs> and it was like, what That's am I a doing here? Catholic yeah. school, by the way. <laughs> and I only went there for a couple of years. And yeah. so I, because most of them happen, these dreams happen at Lorena. I figure that in, there's something, there's some kind of trauma or something there that I'm not facing, right? There's something yeah. there. And yeah. I think that with Bob, that's the same thing that's going on here because I, you don't have that with other jobs, right, Bob? And I don't have that with the other high school that I went to, only with the all-girl Catholic high school that I went to. Right. So I feel like there's something there that it made those dreams happen. So for you, you're probably holding on to something there. That's is my kind guess. of what I was feeling. And yeah. I'm not sure if the supervisor in the dream was just a supervisor in general in your dream or was it somebody you actually used to work with and right that's a good question conflict with at work so something kind of maybe says to me maybe these are like feelings or things that you never got a chance to say right yes that exactly. you're kind of getting out of your subconscious via dream exactly yeah I, i'm not a dream interpreter but <clears throat> i was thinking the exact same thing um i think we have to sometimes really look back at whatever trauma was caused to us by that job or or whatever it is that we're having these reoccurring nightmares about or you know and look at them and try and change them try right. and look at whatever it is differently and then maybe those nightmares and dreams will go away i've yeah. said many times i had uh repeat nightmares about my mom after she passed away once i've dealt with things once i mm -hmm. faced things those went away right. so i think that there's for you bob there's probably something that you're holding on to there that you need to face and and let go of find yeah. a way to let go of it maybe um, as a suggestion um like almost I'm sure you're retired, Bob, uh, but almost as a suggestion, like write a resignation letter. Yeah, that's good. And tell this, these supervisors or this particular supervisor exactly why you're walking out. Yeah. Like basically it's a take this job and sh shove it letter and here's why. Yeah, all the things you've always wanted to and, say. And you just, exactly, and you just get it out and see what that does. Do those dreams still continue? That's a great idea, yep. Or do they sign it, kind of go away? Yeah, that's a great idea. I would definitely yeah. suggest that, that getting those emotions out. Because sometimes you're like, okay, I understand that I have this trauma 
or whatever, but how do I get rid of it? Well, you have to face it. So yeah, that's a good way to face right. it. Absolutely. Writing it down. So, and it's, yeah. but you're getting to say what you need to say or didn't get a chance to say before because of fear of lo- losing your job. Right. Exactly. You know? Yep. Exactly. So. For sure. So hope that we answered that question, Bob, and we would love to hear if you take any of these suggestions and if you have those dreams again, because I bet they'll go away. That'd be my guess. Yeah. So, um, we've started doing a reading in every episode, but you know what? I'd like to do it today at the end because I feel like this episode is really going to get my connection strong because we're going to be philosophy chattering a lot. So mm-hmm. I'm going to wait until the end of the episode to do the reading. Okay. So we'll just save a few minutes for that. And then I had one more thing is that I wanted to welcome the newest member of the Jones family. Oh, yeah. We have adopted an old uh, Great Dane. Yeah. Her name is Betty. <laughs> and you may have heard me talk about many times that we were waiting for this dog to come. We were waiting for an older black Great Dane. I knew that there was white on her. It turns out it's gray. It's right. probably all gray, all the white she has on her There's feet. There's a little white, but I don't know if it's white or gray on her chest. Yeah, but. I'm not really sure, but she's she's a graying girl, and she's been through a lot. She's had a rough life, but she is here with us now. And so there are five of us in this little studio, <laughs> and one of them is got some stomach thing here currently <laughs> releasing toxic At this very fumes moment. into the room At the bar- okay. this very moment oh my lord <laughs> well if you have a dog or a husband you know how it goes <laughs> oh yeah that was okay. probably betty because we were welcoming her yeah so anyways welcome betty to the family welcome yes welcome. So, we love you. Yes, we do. We love her already. She's been here almost a week. She's a good girl. Yeah, but whoa, whoever that was. Damn. Yeah. Sometimes right. it happens in episodes and we, we don't talk about it, you right. know, but we look at each other like, uh-oh. This one was just unavoidable. <laughs> and it was the perfect timing, too. It was like, how could we not say it's happening right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's my recap. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Well, then let's hop into episode 125. Okay. How did it all begin? That is a great question. And you know what? That is a question that nobody has the answer to. Yeah. There is nobody, I bet you, on this planet mm-hmm. that could guess the answer to this question correctly, psychic or not. Nope. And I'll tell you why. Because I don't think any of us could comprehend it. I, I think don't think it's, so. It's such a wide, big topic that our human brains would not grasp actually what is going on. Right. So what this episode is going to be about is mostly us trying to throw our opinions out there and see what is really going on. How did it really start? We're going to talk a little bit about, you know, the, the different ways that people believe it started, not just the universe, but also earth and man. Mm -hmm. And if we get to it, we'll talk about dinosaurs a little bit. Dinosaurs. Yeah. But, um, you know, we don't know how it started. So it's kind of just an opinion episode and a philosophy chatter episode. I got excited yesterday. We started really getting into this topic. We started philosophy chattering and it went on for a while. And I was like, mm. oh, I wish I could have just recorded this because it was perfect, you know? Yeah. So I'm hoping we can recapture some of that because right. what happens for me is that I start to really get a strong connection to the other side mm. and I listen to what they're saying and what they're showing and I throw everything that I know and believe out and I listen to what they're saying and I don't usually even know what I'm talking about and then like there's been a few times where you've been like well Dolores has talked about that in her books I haven't read these books so what is actually going on Mm -hmm. I don't know but we're gonna you know we're gonna philosophy chat about it today yeah yeah very cool. So, and this, we're currently in the series on mysteries. And so I thought this was probably a good episode to start with, considering that how did it all begin? Right. You know? So let's see. Okay. So, how did the universe begin? Well, let's start with what scientists believe and, and uh, astronomers and, and that side of things. They believe in the Big Bang. And the Big Bang is basically just that it was infinitely hot and, and dense. And um, it's a big bang. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think we all pretty much know, you know, the basis of that. Well, I think that's based on, too, the fact that the universe is growing and, yes. and expanding at a certain rate at a certain amount of time. So what caused this to keep moving? So yeah. I think we tend to think, well, science says an opposite, uh, 
uh, an object in motion will tend to stay in motion. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Until it's otherwise stopped. Yeah, absolutely. So something as far as our human mind's concerned is like this inertia had to be caused by something. Right. What caused that? Right. Yeah, exactly. A big bang theory is appropriate for that part of it. Absolutely. It's it's very plausible. I mean, something Mm -hmm. there, you know, and and that's not, that's not an area I'm real good in is science. And so I don't really know, you know, the technicalities of all this and how it worked, but yeah, that, that's something that I, you know, before I was introduced to spirituality, that's probably the way I would have gone was Mm -hmm. to say that I believe that the big bang is, is probably the closest to what it really happened would be my guess. And then we have religion, um, and mostly according to like Christianity and their belief, God just went click. He created the universe. Six days it took him, and then he rested on the seventh. I, the heavens, the I earth, still feel planets. like that's a metaphor, right? You know, it's not. It's not written. Even when I read that in the book of Genesis, that is a metaphor, right? Because it's so quick. Right. As big as the Bible is and as descriptive as it gets about all these different things, <clears throat> it's very short. Yeah. In the be- the, the beginning. Right. Of how this was all done. It's just God created it. Right. Why is it just a metaphor? I think because of what you said earlier, if they were really to tell you what was how this all yeah. happened. Mm-hmm. Your mind would just be bent before you even got to the next chapter of the book. Seriously. <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't, wouldn't want to read it no. anymore. No. Like, I did try to listen to Dolores Cannon, Convoluted Universe, and my brain was way too convoluted at that point for me to continue. But what's happening now is I'm learning this through, you know, the other side and them giving it to me. And that's helping me to understand it better. Yes. But there are so many things that if they would have came to me at the very beginning with all of this and mm-hmm. said, this is how the universe works, I would have been like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Right. And I can't handle this. <laughs> you well, know? That's what I was. That's why I point out. Not that I can remember that book verbatim, you know, yeah. But, when you point out things, I go, oh, yeah, that's discussed in that book. Yeah. You know, she talks about that. Right. This episode and our, and our talk yesterday has made me kind of like a lot of these little tiny epiphanies going off in my head. Think that things that I'm sure some people have thought about, but maybe they haven't. And one of those is, OK, the book of Genesis. And I'm not bagging on religion. Please know I'm not bagging on religion at all. I just want to be a little bit clear here. OK, the book of Genesis was written 2,500 years ago. This earth and universe has been around for who knows, Mm -hmm. billions of billions of years. So where did the person that wrote Genesis get their information from? Right. Well, some of it might have been hearsay, things they heard. But again, there was nobody around when these things were created. So they had to get their information one of two ways, if you ask me. Yeah. By channeling it through a higher source Mm -hmm. or by making it up. Yep. So, and it could be a combination, but... Even that statement alone, okay, because you, 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 we have in the Bible, per se, like the 12 disciples and all their chapters, stories that they wrote. Right. Then we have chapters like you're explaining that we don't know who wrote that. Right. Right. Exactly. Right? I don't know. I mean, maybe, some, I'm sure some people do, but I don't know. And whoever was sharing this was giving a general kind of synopsis, I think, from what they were told or shared with from, I would like to believe, a higher source. And almost in a way of like, it's not important. Right. It was just done. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's been my thing with this is that every time that I try and go to like my guides or whoever I talk to and ask them, okay, tell me, like, help me understand this. They basically do tell me, you can't really understand this. You know, we'll give you some some ways to try to, but there really is no way to put your head around this. You're not going to figure it out. Right. It's just not going to happen. Right. And that's okay. So I've dealt with, you know, I'm never going to know this most likely till I die, but it's probably the first question I'm going to want to know. How did it all begin? But I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a little mind bender here, okay? And I know you and I probably feel differently on this. And I think this is great that we look at this differently because then we can show how, you know, the opinions may vary and how interpretations may vary. Mm-hmm. For me, every time that I go and try and ask, how does the universe start? I am told that I'm overthinking it, that it's actually much simpler 
that this is actually not real, that this is a simulation, that there is no such thing as physical, that we, it's our perception. And here's something that the way that they kind of describe this to me, we went to, um, Warner Brothers Studios tour last week, and they explain how in the movies, the camera only sees 2D, but we see 3D, okay? So the camera, like when you're looking... Forced perception you're talking about. Right, forced perception. Well, kind of, yeah. So when you're looking at like, let's... One of the ones they did there was the Big Bang Theory, okay? And if you've ever seen the Big Bang Theory, a lot of the episodes have parts where they're walking up the stairs. I can't remember what floor they're on, but let's just say they're on the third floor. So they have conversations going up the stairwells, right? Well, in the show on TV, the stairwell looks like it's continuously going. Where actually, this is wallpaper. Right. It's not even real, but it looks real on camera. Mm-hmm. You know, like last night we were watching a movie and you were like, they did this on the on the Brooklyn Bridge. I was like, no, there's no way. That's a screen. You're like, it can't be. It's, it's so real. real. Yeah. But that's the whole point. They want to make it as real as possible. Anyways, right. going back to this is that so we see in 3D, a person that has their four, their third eye open sees in 4D, okay? So you see more. Now, I don't see in 4D all the time. I have glimpses of things, you know, which is my job. But I also see spirits. Mm-hmm. And when I see spirits, that's a glimpse into 4D, okay? Now, imagine what I would be seeing if I was actually seeing all of 4D that's going on around me. And I don't know how many dimensions there are, okay? Okay. But the way that I break this down is there was no beginning of the universe because it just always was because it's not actually a physical thing. And then my brain explodes. And I don't know how to explain it. (laughs) But that's what I'm told. That's what I'm told. Yeah, I feel I would kind of agree in the sense of that it's like an organic simulation. So, yes, because it's still here. And and I remember asking your mom this when we channeled her, and I was like, "Are we actually like is this real? Like in the sense of all this stuff right. and objects?" She's like, "Yeah, yeah." The level of what we mean by real, yeah. Uh, you know, this is the part that throws me off, um, because if if spirits can walk on this earth along with us that means there's a whole nother dimension let me take that back if spirits can occupy this world with us not walk then that means there's a dimension that we're not perceiving absolutely there is yeah that we can't see right that's among us Mm -hmm. how many layers of dimensions could there be within one world great question so how and then you start thinking in terms of that with simultaneous time mm-hmm. happening in one place. So mm-hmm. I go, God, if you could look at this planet and see all this with like X ray vision, there'd be a lot of activity a going on. A lot of on. activity, yeah. And it would just like mass confusion. But um, yeah, so I think that there is something organically in this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Is it real? What's real? Right. Well, sometimes we have dreams that feel so real, and Mm. then we wake up and we're like, whoa, that wasn't real. But this feels so real. Do you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, that's why I think that we just can't understand, because to us, we've been put here and taught that this is all there is. This is what's real, when really so much of it is just our perception. You know, it's... it. And when I say simulation, I don't want people to take the wrong impression of this. I'm not talking about that there's, we're in a computer that we're being controlled by an artificial intelligence. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that there is another dimension where I'm not saying we're controlled by there, but we're helped by there. We're given things to help us along our paths. And one of the things that helps us from there is our higher self. Right. So in a way we are kind of controlling ourselves a Mm -hmm. little bit because our higher self is there. When you give yourself messages, it's not a control, but it's a suggestion. It's, it's a suggestion of how to move your character along the simulation, you know, but it doesn't mean that we're being controlled or that there's something artificial doing that. Well, let's, Let's go back to the Big Bang Theory for a second, because that's what we're on, right? And I want to talk about that. Like, let's say this this is, let's say it is real, mm-hmm. okay? 
whatever your idea of real is, whether it's simulated and like an organic simulation or whatever it is, but let's say if it's either that or it's real, but <clears throat> my mind always wants to go back. Okay, great. Big bang theory. Everything explodes. But what's the moment for me before? Yes. So this is where the, the moment right before this actual event, right? Is this an empty black vacuum? Does that even exist? Or is that, part of the simulation because it holds the heavenly bodies that right. we walk and roam on right yeah. if this energy was sitting as this tight compressed ball of energy in this black room and decides i'm so powerful but i can't take up this room mm -hmm. as one whole mass mm -hmm. but i can scatter my energy across this room it, yeah. or this infinite space and my energy can then still take over this space right yeah and if we are this is the part that draws me in about being one all being one mm -hmm. that if it started as that and it blew out meaning the gases that create stars the souls that will inhabit bodies you know um the the stars that the planets will then be created around those stars and whatever. And it goes on and on. Is that then our creator or God or Allah, whatever you want to call it, scattering himself across an empty blanket? Right. And now we are all pieces of that. Absolutely. Fragments of this energy. Mm -hmm. We are essentially a piece of him. So as we're moving away in a, virtual um simulation or organic simulation or whatever is we're moving away with this inertia because of this big bang we're all trying to get back to that source yeah but we can't because we're in a in a body now mm -hmm. so but our desire i feel like is to get back to that energy right back to the main source so that's the part that I go, okay, cool, but what was going on before? Was yeah. it was there black empty space? Was it just it was? Right. And what does that mean? Mm -hmm. It was. But I feel like the way that the Bible says it, it's very simple. Like it just was. It just let's was, not, yeah. Let's not get let's not too much it, yeah. into how did it happen. Uh -huh. Because it, this might spook you or just bend your mind like a pretzel and yeah. you wouldn't understand. Yeah. So there is th that part that I, I kind of want to cling to, but I, I feel like I'm doing that because I'm in a body. Right. And I need to explain things and, and you know, how worlds and stuff like this begin. And maybe that's just not part of what we're supposed to know here right now, because like you said, we'll get all that information yeah. when we get there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I just, I really don't think that we could even, even <clears throat> grasp it. But when I was kind of doing some research and thinking about putting this episode together, one of the things that I, I was thinking about is, okay, so we know like scientists and, and astrologers and stuff, how they look at this and they look at a big bang. And then we know how religion looks at it. But what about people like us? What about us that are spiritualists and how does that community think about this? And, mm -hmm. and I found a third way that they say is possible and this is called the first cause and it turns out that this is a lot of what the metaphysical community believes mm -hmm. now i haven't done a lot of research on this but i wanted to just touch touch on it really really quickly um this is called the first cause and it's based around cause and effect the idea is that everything that exists has something that caused it there is nothing in this world that comes from nothing except god god is the first cause so this could support the Big Bang Theory to a certain degree as well, because it could say that this entity, this soul, whatever this is, that is, you know, God, the the source, let's mm. call it the source, mm -hmm. then that source decided, okay, we need to make the universe. I'm going to, you know, put this, this, whatever it is, this capsule, and, and there, it's gonna, there's going to be a Big Bang. That would have been an effect of him being the first cause. 
Does that make sense? Hmm. So everything has an effect right. and everything has a reason. And it all comes down to that God is the first cause that there's there. And I think what they're trying to say there is there's no explanation of what came before him. He just was. Or and I don't even know was. if we'll know that when we go. Yeah, I Maybe don't know. That's just a top secret thing. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I want to know, though, because just like you, that is where my mind goes to. What was before? Was mm-hmm. it just some black space? Like it couldn't it had and then and then I start really tripping myself out because we all know we're here. There's a reason why we're here. There's there was a cause and effect there, but we just don't know what it was traced back to, like right. the chicken and the egg. That, you know? The term cause and effect sort of gives me a scientific feel. Mm-hmm. Like it is still kind of based on science right like as far as we know that things have to be made by something yeah i yeah you know for sure like that that object in motion that stays in motion that was put in motion by something right yeah and something made that something to put that in motion so we can keep going backwards and backwards and backwards and maybe never even get that answer right exactly especially if it's a simulation because there is no answer because it just is and yeah. then it, pff, the brain explodes again <laughs> yeah yeah okay so moving on from how did the universe begin what about people what about earth what about the things here you know we're taught a few different things in school or you know <clears throat> growing up or whatever and one of them that we're taught is is religion is Adam and Eve that there was a, a man and that Adam it's so what this is what I I wrote down this is great stuff mm-hmm. Adam was made from the dust on the ground when God breathed life into <coughs> him okay but then this is my favorite part Eve was created out of Adam's ribs to provide company for Adam okay come on now that now we're getting silly. I, she again, wasn't created for I it. just feel like we're <laughs> we're hearing metaphor. It's we're yeah, hearing it's a, metaphor. a simple explanation right. for something that would probably jack you up if you really heard totally. how it was done. You wouldn't understand. Right. You know, I don't know if there was an Adam and Eve. I, I, I don't know, but to me there has to be a starting point of human life. And it's not just God went click and there was a full grown man. And then he pulled a rib out and went click again, and there was a woman. And then the main purpose here is to procreate, but they try to procreate, and it's a sin, and they're stripped of everything and made to feel bad. That makes no sense. Makes no sense to me at all. Yeah, it doesn't. It, how does that make sense? And, and again, I'm not knocking religion. It's just we have to think about these things logically. And you Well, know, I do, but you went, with the text you're dealing with, you know, in the context of the text itself, it's like, are we dealing with metaphor? Are we dealing right. with legend and right. what's been passed down in translation? And it goes on and on. Absolutely. But that is what religion believes. They believe in Adam and Eve. Okay? Mm-hmm. Then there's evolution. And evolution was um, founded by Charles Darwin. He He's referred to as the father of evolution. And his theory declared that species survive through a process called natural selection, where um, they have to breed and evolve to to stay a- around, to stay active. And so, like, let's take... Okay, this is why I don't think that we came from monkeys. So let's take Darwin's right. thing, okay? In order for us to evolve into humans, we wouldn't evolve from monkeys because the monkeys would just keep evolving into different monkeys. We were some form of man, <clears throat> like a ne- Neanderthal, okay, that just evolved. Mm-hmm. They, from that man, it just evolved. Everything has a beginning point, like yeah. like an alligator, okay? Probably wasn't just dropped on this planet right. as an alligator. Right. It probably started as some kind of small, you know, little right. thing that evolved over billions of years. We forget, because we're here for only such a short period of time, <clears throat> we forget just how much time has passed on this earth and right. how much time things have had a chance to evolve. That's based on our knowledge of time and yeah, exactly. our dating process and... You know, we don't, how accurate are we? We don't really even know that. Right, exactly. For me, Darwin theory is valid when it comes to explaining the survival of Mm -hmm. species. It definitely does. However, it does not explain, for me, 
how the species got here. No, me either. Doesn't. Mm-mm. Sorry. It doesn't. No. I can't. I yeah. can't agree with that. Things crawled out of the ocean, and or you know started as one species and ended up as another. Yeah, I can't either. I look at the world today. I was telling you this. I look at the world today and I see. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, humans are remarkably similar to chimpanzees. Okay, or gorillas. All right. But so are dogs and horses. Mm -hmm. They walk on four legs. Mm -hmm. They look similar. Their body makeup. They're totally different. Right. We're totally different. Dogs and horses are similar. Bats and birds, they both fly. Yeah. They're completely different animals. Yeah. So I can't, that doesn't work for me. Right. Yeah. Like we don't, I don't know. I'm not a scientist and I don't know anything about paleontology or anything, but Birds, we believe, from what I believe, understand, is that they came from dinosaurs. They Mm. came from that era. They have evolved into what they are now, which makes sense. But where did they start from is what we're talking Mm. about. Not how they evolved, but where did they start from? And this is a whole other mind bender because when, okay, so we have the universe and we have all these planets, right? And if we think that this is the first planet that had any form of life on it, I think we're really wrong about that. Way, way wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I don't know what happened, but my assumption would be that we came here from another planet, you know? Um, They're like, you talk about seeds and and aliens planting seeds, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's definitely a possibility. That's kind of where I tend to lean. I, I feel like just in this planet alone, and you see all the different things, and I find myself going, God, man, that thing looks like it should be from another world. And then that rings in my ears. Mm-hmm. Like, well, maybe it is. Yeah. No, it's through Darwin's theory. It's evolved in its time here. Right. But we didn't, I can't, I can't take that we rose up from dust and that we crawled out of the ocean. Yeah. No, I just, I believe that there is a greater consciousness within the universe that goes and puts life and watches and helps it nourish and grow. Yep. To take this, whatever it was, the Big Bang Theory, or however it got started, to take this simulation, or whatever it is we're in, this life, and make it as fulfilling and lear- um, learning as possible. Right. And so it's ingenious. If If this is just... An organic simulation, it's just ingenious because you couldn't learn from a textbook right. what you can learn walking through a life. Right. You just can't. No, you can't. Absolutely. You can learn a lot from books. Yeah. But you can't learn what it's like to live a life from a book. No, you can't. No. So there is actually a theory, a hypothesis based on that aliens are a part of the evolution of humans or the bringing of humans to this planet. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but uh, pan, panspermia is the hip, the hypothesis that life exists throughout the universe, that life existing throughout the universe is distributed by space dust, meteoroids, asteroids, comets, and planetoids. And I can absolutely see this kind of thing happening. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, that we came in on an asteroid. Mm-hmm. That's maybe not, you know, the way it went. But Things like some of the creatures in our ocean that Mm -hmm. are just like, where did this come from? Mm -hmm. You know, or let's talk about most of the things that live on Australia. Mm -hmm. You know, there could have been some crazy comet or (coughs) meteor or something that went to Australia and brought you guys all those crazy animals that you have that nobody else (laughs) has. You know, we have no idea. But to me, that doesn't seem unreasonable right that there is so much out there that we don't know anything about we don't know anything about it and there's things flying all throughout our universe and you know they say a meteor took out the dinosaurs well what was on that meteor that took out the dinosaurs did it bring other things with it did it bring these other creatures you know or like um like let's just say for example like sea monkeys they're not alive right mm-hmm. until you wet them so like what if things like that came from other planets on meteors right. and then they landed here and then they get wet and i know this sounds like gremlins right. but you got sea monkeys as proof that it can be so why couldn't it have come in on like a comet or, or something yeah and i mean those you know polywogs turning into frogs yeah that that mm-hmm. shows 
evolution. Uh-huh. It proves it. I mean, there's no doubt. Um, I was reading a really interesting article about that with the dinosaurs and how, you know, we're, this crater exists uh, down in the Gulf of Mexico, which is, I don't remember the name of the crater, but this is, um, I think it starts with a C. And this is the crater that supposedly is the impact site of the ast- the meteorite that took out the dinosaurs. But the truth is, <clears throat> according to this article and studies geologically, um, that they were already in decline before this happened. Mm-hmm. And this was climate change. Okay? Right. The dinosaurs, like reptiles, which we believe they derive from, um, like hot climates. They're cold-blooded animals. Mm-hmm. They like warm, hot. Right. Um, well, you've got all this activity from volcanoes <clears throat> on the Earth that are erupting because of Earth's geological change that's happening, throwing all this up in the air. It's caught blocking out sun, and it's cooling the atmosphere. Right. To the point where now you're not getting the sunlight for the vegetation. You're not... Um, because one of the big things they pointed out was the herbivore dinosaurs mm-hmm. were going first. Right. Right. Then the the carnivores, yeah, they thought the they carnivorous on. ones, were going. They had nothing to eat, but mm-hmm. there was not as much vegetation for the, right. the herbivores to eat. So the population was already in decline mm-hmm. because of the climate change. And then this just came in and sort of sealed the deal and I right. believe wiped out like 75% of life, you know. Right. And they, again, this is like one of those things that was meant to be, like they're supposed to be wiped out. They're not supposed to live with us. Oh, they were God, supposed to imagine? go extinct. <laughs> no. Those, that was something like, can you imagine a T-Rex that kept evolving? No, yeah. there wouldn't be people because it would eat everybody. <clears throat> so this is one of those areas where the universe probably stepped in and was like, okay, well, it's time for these creatures to go. So then you have to ask yourself, why were they put here to begin with? Right. Is there a reason? Is there a bigger reason than just, you know, these are the prehistoric creatures? Yeah. For me, like, we were talking about this, and, and you did make a very good point, but I was wondering if maybe one of the reasons that they were put here was because we used their oil. And that's one of our resources. Mm-hmm. But then you pointed out that oil is really bad for the environment. So then I, I was, think we may have missed the mark. Yeah. On what the true use of either that oil or their presence being left behind Mm -hmm. on this earth. I think we missed it a little bit. I don't think it was meant for us to pump into the atmosphere via motor vehicles around the globe and then, you know, thinning the ozone layer and whatnot. So I don't. I don't feel like that was the true purpose. If anything, it was to let us know. Right. That there's. There were other things before you. I mean, there's places like in Scotland or maybe Ireland, Europe areas where there are footprints left in like what would have been cooling magma or rock left that are you could lay you could lay in it probably. Yeah. How do we explain that? Right. Yeah. That's wild. I mean, giants, yeah. dinosaurs, but maybe that's because we're supposed to understand yeah. that you're not the only thing that was here and you're not the only thing that's beyond this. Right. We only have like <clears throat> records, you know, written records that go back a few thousand years. I mean, really, mm-hmm. like we don't know what happened before that. Anything that happened before that, we either find from digging it up in the earth mm-hmm. Or we, you know, connect to the other side, I guess. But we don't know. We have no idea. I I think that there's a lot more that's gone on on this planet than we realize. Oh, yeah. And that's something that in this series we're going to talk about a lot is, like, what else happened here? What I think a lot of the history has been erased mm-hmm. just because it almost needed to be that way to start over and see, like, can we get it right this time? Yeah. You know? And Absolutely. With each civilization comes new challenges. I absolutely believe that. I think that we get to a point with technology 
where we may just have to be wiped out. And I'm, I'm not saying this is going to happen, you know, anytime in our lifetime, but I think you get to a point where then it's like, well, we have to start over, you know, was Atlantis one of those, you know, maybe it was, uh, that's something that we'll in this series right. we'll get into, but, um, we don't know. We really don't know, but there's a lot of civilizations that have just vanished mm -hmm. and, or gone extinct or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> They're just not around anymore, and why? Like the Mayans, for example, there's no, there's no burial grounds and bones, like yeah. massive amounts of bones found in that area. Right. They all left. Yep. Exactly. Yep. How we don't know. Yeah. But they're not there. No. They abandoned. They left. Yeah. Wouldn't you think through history then that it would show that? Okay, some of the Mayans went here to Puerto Rico. Right. And some of them took a boat and went to Europe. Right. And then so we could see these. Right. There isn't, that hasn't happened. No. No. There's a lot that goes on, not just on this planet, but in this universe that we don't understand and we no. know nothing about. And you know what? For our human brains, <clears throat> some of that is good that we don't know it. Right. But I think that um, diving into it is pretty cool. And, and that's what figure it out. Yes, and what everybody was kind of freaking out about, like, Y2K, because <laughs> the Mayan calendar stopped. Oh, the 2012? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it didn't stop because that was the end of the world. It stopped because they vanished. They yeah. left. Yeah. The, well, the calendar ended. It was just like starting a new calendar. You need to start a new calendar. They right. didn't start a new calendar. That, but that didn't mean it was the end of the world. <laughs> no. It just, for them, it was the end of their story. Right. Their documentation of yeah. what's going on but we we want to look at it as something more than that always and turn it into something deeper and you know what it doesn't go like that the universe has control of how this goes and you know when it's our time it's our time but just because the mayan calendar and ended in one time doesn't mean that that's when we're gonna end right you know no we have to get these kinds of things out of our head it, yeah it, we don't know what went on in that civilization we don't have any clue it's all assumption yeah it really is it's all guess and assumption just like everything we're talking about today is opinion you know it's it these are all our opinions <coughs> aliens or simulations or whatever and you know one day hopefully we'll know but right now they're just giant mysteries giant mysteries but i think that the universe itself and you know spirits they want us to think on this level Oh, yeah. Um, because when we do, I think great advancements start to happen for us as a species. Absolutely. Because you tend to think outside of the box. Yeah. When you ponder things that are very vast for your mind. Yeah. You know, to understand. Yeah. You know, most of the time when I have these kind of conversations with my mom or whoever about what's actually going on in the universe, you're there to watch them come out of my mouth and watch them develop. And it's kind of crazy because the stuff that comes out of my mouth is not stuff I ever would have thought about ever. It's like <clears throat> the stuff out of sci-fi movies. And I'm just not a writer like that. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm not good at that. So when I hear these things come out of my mouth, I'm like... There has to be some validity to this because I'm not good at making up stories. So there's there's some validity. And, and I don't know exactly where the lines are and, and what's going on. But I just know that there is a lot more going on out there that we know anything about and that we should take that seriously and, you know, live our best lives because there is a lot of, you know, crazy. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, it's... um. I don't know. You know, I, I wonder, we live so many lives, like, all of us could have lived in the time of dinosaurs if there were people around, or they right. say there weren't, but like, when people came around, I think it was like 65 million years later or whatever, you know, some of us could have lived back then. We don't know. It's all a giant mystery. I don't think that there's one human that's been born or died on this planet that hasn't looked up at the sky, especially at night, and wondered, how did this all happen? Yeah. Absolutely. Th that is kind of one of our our kind of connecting things. Yeah. Other than the fact that we are all born and we all transition to the other side. Right. So, but within us, we all ask this question at some point in our life, whether it's multiple times 
or just once right. as a child in awe. Yeah. But I think it's, and that question is there for a reason. Yeah. Because I think part of that question keeps civilization going. Absolutely. At least intelligent civilization. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. This desire. And there's other intelligent civilizations, I believe, that have a way greater, <clears throat> greater understanding of what is going on here. Yes. And they serve this universe way better than we do. Yes. And I'm sure that's something we'll get into, too, is like, how did they use their intuition in those times? You know, we'll get into that in the mm-hmm. series. And because I think that that is very much the case is that back in those those days when, you know, humans didn't have language that they did, they talked telepathically. And I mm-hmm. think this is just something that as we've gotten more into like our era and our time, our times that we've kind of just cast it aside, mm-hmm. you know, so. But I think they used it way back then. And we'll, we'll talk about that more. But anyway, so yeah. this is just the tip of the iceberg when it mm. comes to mysteries of the universe. Cool. So yeah. I like it. Me too. I like to, I honestly like the ones where we can just like philosophy chat and right. talk about, you know, what could be going on. Then me sitting here and doing research on stuff that I don't know what I'm talking about. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's like, I don't need to teach you guys right. stuff. I don't need to be the teacher. I just want to philosophy chat about right. it and talk about the possibilities. So I like these episodes for sure. I do. I yeah. like to think on grander scales, I think, yep. of like what is and what could be. Me too. So. Yeah. Well, cool. That was great. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for philosophy chattering. Yeah, I thought that was good. Good, good, good. Awesome. And then I promise we do this reading and we oh, still yeah. have a few minutes. Go so let's it. do it. Okay. So this is for Beatrice. Beatrice says, this is my beautiful friend, Marilyn. She died in 2016. I miss her so much. And I have often wondered what the cause of her death was. When I met her in 2001, she was a successful executive in New York. We both moved to North Carolina within months of each other. Things did not go well for her here. And a mutual friend told me that after a surgery, she became addicted to opioids and her death was ruled an overdose. Mm. She had a heart of gold. She adored cats. She had five, plus all the cats she fed in the wooded areas. She went into a deep depression when cops killed her dog. Mm. She had always been the cat lady, but rescued her dog in the middle of a storm, and she became her baby. I'm really hoping to hear from her and to know that this beautiful soul is doing great on the other side. Okay, so let's talk to Marilyn, and I'll show you. This is Marilyn. Mm -hmm. So I felt a few things with, with Marilyn while I was reading that for you, which means she's already here. Um... So she fell and she fell hard. She is telling me that her life was everything that she imagined that it would be and more. And she didn't realize how some things can change it so quickly. And a couple of those things, like you mentioned here, are the drugs and then the trauma. Mm -hmm. The trauma, I feel like, fed more of this than anything. And the opiates were just a way to soothe. And I understand because I did this when my mom died. I started with the opioids. It, it, you know, anything that can help you make a feel, feel a little bit better. And that's how I feel like she was feeling, that it just made her feel a little bit better. And anything was better than nothing. Right. Was this an accidental overdose? Yes, it was. <clears throat> but I say that with reluctancy because I feel like it's what she wanted. She was praying for the accidental overdose. She didn't want to live anymore. When she was taking these pills, she was crying, hoping that it would end her life. Yeah. When we have these kinds of things that happen to us, when we're the person that commits suicide, I do truly believe that this is a way that our we choose to exit. We just can't take it anymore, okay? Yeah. So she probably didn't want to do it herself, which is great. But I can tell you that she most likely had this arrangement with the universe was that she was going to OD this way and this was the way things were going to go because she needed to get out. Right. Things were not going to get better for her because her depression had spiraled so far out of control that there was nothing that she felt could have been done. I feel like she lost a lot of money. Um, that she had everything, like I said, that she wanted. And then all of a sudden, everything started falling from her life. And it was just one thing after the other after the other. Hmm. And you know what? This happens to a lot of people. This kind of happened to my mom as well. And 
I think this is one of the areas of our lives where we have to decide what we're going to do with it. Are we going to pick ourselves up and dust ourselves off and try and get on with things? Or are we going to quit? And unfortunately, she decided that she just wanted to quit. She didn't want to try anymore. So know that she did make this decision, but she did not kill herself, if that that makes sense. Um, she, looking back now, she feels that she made the wrong decision because she feels that she could have made this better. And there's always a way. There is always a way out of everything. But you have to try. You have to work for it. And she wasn't in the place in her life that she wanted to work for it. And so then nothing good was coming. Because if you don't work for the good, then the good doesn't come. So she was just getting bad, 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 and more bad. So, but she sees now where she could have changed things in her life and made it go the opposite direction. And I hear this a lot from from people that go down that kind of path is that they see it when they get there. They just don't see it when they're here. Yeah. So I try and help people to see that, that just because today is a bad day or it's it may feel like a bad year does not mean five years from now you're going to be in the same place. But she didn't understand that. And yeah. she does that now. Um, she's telling me that it's very sweet that you would reach out and that you worry about her. She always thought that you were really down to earth and a very friendly person. And um, she she really liked you and thought, she's telling me that you're the type of person that if somebody can't get along with you, there's something wrong with them. <laughs> so that's cute. <laughs> that's a nice compliment. Yeah, it is. It's very nice. <clears throat> so yeah, she appreciates you looking out for her and says that she's good. She's good. She's learned a lot. And she's trying to give back to the people that were in her life to make up for leaving. And um, so she's doing good things on the other side. So nice. there we have it. That's cool. That's Beatrice and, and Margaret. Thank or you. Marilyn, sorry. Marilyn. Thank you, ladies. Yes, thank you so much. She was a very sweet Appreciate spirit. It. Yeah. And Beatrice is very sweet. If you can't get along with her, there's something wrong with you. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. Cool. There's the very episode. Nice. Yay. Very cool. Well, that was a good episode. Yes, it was. Good reading. Yeah. Before we say goodbye to all our friends, you want to share your page? Yes, you can find me at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com or you can reach me at beyondthebridge11 at gmail.com. And for the show, we are spiritualjoneses at gmail.com. Nice. Yay. And then you, sir. Yes, thank you. Um, for my art, djonesartcollection.com for the web. At D. Jones, our collection for Instagram and Facebook. Uh, for the music, gypsybrown.com for the web, at Gypsy Brown Music for Instagram, at Gypsy Brown Band for Facebook. And just to go back real quick, I did want us to publicly, yes, uh, welcome Mr. David Ballinger, Yay. Uh, who is going to be our resident keyboard player. Um, and we've had a couple rehearsals with him already, and it's been really cool, and he's br- brought some wonderful feel to the music and we're just excited so yay he will be joining us at the show october 1st at a the canyon club in agura hills yay how exciting so we hope to see you there that's a quick that plug of that too so yay. very good and welcome dave yes glad dave. to have you so stoked yeah for Ma- sure makes a big difference yeah and that's all i got yay and congratulations betty on making it through her first episode they're yay. all asleep it went great yes, it <laughs> we did. were like how are we gonna fit us all in here but it worked out just <laughs> it fine. did yeah cool so all right well we hope everybody got something out of this this week that we do i did yep. and we hope everybody has a great week yep. until next week peace and love, love.